it is with a population of at least 10 million people are sprouting everywhere in Africa. Cairo in Egypt, Kinshasa in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and Lagos in Nigeria are already megacities. While Luanda in Angola, Dar es Salaam in Tanzania, and Johannesburg in South Africa will attain the status by the year 2030. Abidjan in Cote d'Ivoire and Nairobi in Kenya will surpass the 10 million threshold by the year 2040. And by the year 2050, Wagadugu in Burkina Faso, Addis Ababa in Ethiopia, Bamako in Mali, Dakar in Senegal and Ibadan and Kano in Nigeria will join the ranks, bringing the total number of mega cities in Africa to 14 in about 30 years. By the year 2042, the number of people living in urban areas in Africa will have doubled to more than 1 billion. In this video, we look into some of these mega cities, their history, challenges and opportunities and how they plan to embark on new developments. The 1950 street map of Lagos shows a small western style coastal city surrounded by a few semi-rural African villages. Paved roads quickly turn to dirt and fields to forest. There are a few buildings over six floors high and not many cars. It has an orderly, beautiful urban environment that features Portuguese, Brazilian and British Victorian architecture. Its streets are clean and tree-lined urban crime is virtually non-existent. However, in just two generations, Lagos grew 100-fold from under 200,000 people to nearly 20 million people. Today, Lagos is one of the world's 10 largest cities. It sprawls across nearly 1,000 square kilometers, vastly wealthy in parts. It is largely chaotic and impoverished. Most residents live in informal settlements or slums. The great majority are not connected to piped water or a sanitation system. The city's streets are choked with traffic, its air is full of fumes, and its main dump covers 40 hectares and receives 10,000 metric tons of waste a day. Nobody knows exactly how many people live in Lagos, but they all agree on one thing. Nigeria's biggest city is growing at a terrifying rate. If Nigeria's population continues to grow and people move to cities at the same rate as now, Lagos could become the world's largest metropolis by the year 2100, housing an astonishing 88 million people, up from the currently estimate of 21 million people. Modern-day Lagos was founded by the Awori in the 13th century. It was later called Iko, the Portuguese explorer Rui de Siqueira, who visited the area in 1472, named the area around the city Lago de Curamo. The present name is Portuguese for lakes. The physical area of Lagos has also grown as its population has. Lagos Island was the original site of the settlement. Since then, the city has grown onto the mainland. Rapid urbanization has occurred with thousands of people migrating to the area, seeking employment opportunities. This growth of Lagos continues to happen every day, with an estimated 10,000 people arriving in the city weekly from the poorer parts of Nigeria attracted by an economy bigger than that of Ethiopia. To overcome some of the challenges brought about by this high increase in population, Lagos state authorities together with private sector entities have initiated development projects that seek to improve the livability of Lagos residents. For example, over the past 15 years, the authorities have succeeded in raising more taxes, then going ahead and using that money to restore some basic infrastructure, expand public service, and strengthen law enforcement. Some of these improvements include public transport and the reclamation and greening of previously disused and misused spaces below Lagos's many flyovers, bridges and interchanges. In addition, roads have been fixed and pavements built. In some part of the city, there is portable water supply and blighted residential and commercial areas are being rebuilt.
the private sector on its part has come in to take advantage of opportunities offered by the government. Some of these opportunities include projects such as Lake Free Zone, which currently houses several estates, gated residential developments, agricultural farmlands, and areas allocated for a free trade zone with an airport and a seaport under construction. Upon completion, it is envisaged that the peninsula will become a blue-green environment city and is expected to accommodate well over 3.4 million residential population and an additional non-residential population of at least 1.9 million people. Another major project includes Eco-Atlantic City Project, a planned city being constructed on land reclaimed from the Atlantic Ocean. Upon completion, the new peninsula anticipates to have at least 250,000 people and a daily flow of 150,000 commuters. This development is also designed to help in stopping the erosion of Lagos State's coastline. These new projects are all welcome if Lagos is truly going to become a true modern megacity it is destined to be. But given decades of neglect, a great deal still needs to be done and only time will tell.